Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Jared Brandon. Chris Graham. Me, Todd Novak. And our super duper special guest this week. Uh, Drew Swindle with Swindler FX. All right. Welcome, Drew. And hey, glad to be here. Yes, and welcome to all those listening around the globalness right now. Um, we are glad you are here. And um, we are uh, once again very thankful for your comments and your participation wherever we are uh, online, in the socials, in the email, and all the great uh, messages and comments that we get from you. It's so very much appreciated. Yes, it's my favorite part of the week. Oh, pizza oh, helps. It's Friday. Yeah, yeah. Jared, all you can see, all he sees in his eyes is pizza. It's like a cartoon where Chris and I both look like giant pieces of pizza, and we're like, "What are you looking at, buddy?" Pizza. <laughs> we go get pizza at this place here in town after every podcast. Yes. Yeah, that's what heard. keeps me coming every week. You, so. Pizza is delicious. Yes, Chris, you sound like you're in the other room. Pizza is delicious. Yes. He's he just he he's a mastering engineer who hates being close to a microphone. It's true. You got microphobia. I've got <laughs> personal space issues. Yes. Yeah, true, I respect that. True story. That. Yes. And we're gonna get into it. Any wait, do you guys have any like outstanding items, nudes items, things? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a table full of Swindler Effects pedals here, and man, that was a lot of fun. Tell you what. So, Sweet. yeah, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about what's going on in our music worlds this week. <laughs> it's an extremely long hair, and there's two balds in here. What is going on, yeah. Jared? No, it's not for my house. What the crap did he just pull out of that box? The, I'm not the one that with daughters. That looks like something from the dryer. Yeah, I don't know. There, there was a that hair. Wasn't, that was not hair. That was wire. What? And I hope that wasn't wire. Oh, oh, it was pickup was was pick wire. That was like a three-foot-long hair yeah, that I yeah. pulled out of this pickup Yeah, that's pickup wire. It, it made its way into this uh, Swindler pedal box. That well, would, that would well have been it long- made its way out. No, okay, <laughs> yeah. Drew, don't worry. You're not... Sorry, Drew, that's not enough copper to take to the... You know, to the recycling. Oh, I thought I lost some hair in one of my boxes and y'all got it. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's copper. Yeah. Um, okay, so, Jared, Music World this week. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Tell you what. Yeah. So, um, I went to the tax guy, <laughs> and I was told that I had to pay out a lot of money for taxes because of taxes and things that you have to pay for, and I'm not going to go into that. So You kind of just did, though. Well, I just, everybody pays taxes. It's just... I'm a fine, outstanding, tax-paying citizen, okay? So anyway, it's a lot of money, and I got I got down and blue about it, so I decided to buy a guitar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a 1964 Gibson SG Special mm. in all original condition. Very clean, and uh, it, I'm... Basically getting it and from the original the, actual good case, not the, the good chipboard case. Yeah, case. the original owner that bought the guitar sprung for the <clears throat> the expensive nice hard case, which is a black pebble uh, Gibson case with the yellow interior inside. Those things go anywhere from three hundred to six hundred bucks uh, asking price on those, and and they get it too. They get that. You know, depending on the condition of the case, it's yeah, it's that bright yellow on the inside. It's a bright yellow on the inside. Cool, I like those. And Mm -hmm. they, it's got. I haven't seen it yet. So, well, you saw the pictures. I saw the pictures, but when you buy something, when you invest in something, and you buy it, but you don't have it yet, that in between time, it's awkward. Is that well? It's that anticipation that just grabs at your soul and your heart, and that just. it makes He's, you go on the computer. You're actually talking about pizza right now, though, aren't you? <laughs> no, man, this guitar. So you you just keep looking at those pictures over and over again because mm-hmm. all you have running through your head is, man, I can't wait to get it. I can't wait to get it. And I have until um, Wednesday, so about five days yet till I get it. And that's a hardtail, right? 
Yes, it's it's the hardtail. It's the uh, the guy who had it had one of those bridges that you could actually intonate. Um, mm. If you have the third string that's not wound, see back in the the sixties, all your third strings were wound, and now they're not. So some of them are still wound. I honestly, oh yeah. I can't use an unwound third string. It just doesn't work when I play guitar. Jeez, I'm in a total you play a lot of acoustic guitar though too. Yes, so you're used I'm used to, to a wound third. Yeah. yeah, but what happens is guys use the unwound third on these old bridges, the original bridges, and, and the, it, it doesn't stay in tune right because it's not the, in the right position. Hmm. So the guy put on an aftermarket thing and slightly shaved the pick guard a little bit. Well, unbeknownst to him, those things go anywhere from 175 to 250 bucks in original condition. You know, uh, after or, or on uh, internet price or whatever. So that's the only thing that bothers me a little. However, if I want to use an unwound third, I can just stick that bridge on there because it does come with the guitar. That's so, cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited and Jones. And that that this that thing. bridge is actually the, the the intonated bridge, so you don't have a bridge and a tunematic. Correct. It's just all you have is just oh yeah the wrapper yep. yeah. two P nineties really two cool. volume two tone. I wish um, I could put that on my special. Why uh, binding around the neck? I mean, it's just a gorgeous guitar. Mm-hmm. I, it, the neck profile is my favorite. <laughs> so I said to Jared, I said, dude, why are you getting another? You've got two SGs. He goes, oh no. I got way more than that. <laughs> and I do. What? I, I, Why do you have so many SGs? I don't know how many I have. I have That's, a lot. Well. I need this guitar for, <laughs> for my business. Mm-hmm. I need a vintage guitar to compare my product with. Mm. So yeah. I, hey, whatever I you got to tell yourself, equipment. that's okay, man. That's, that's, you're not going to get any argument from us. That's why I need the guitar. Okay. I get you. Hey, Drew, why don't you tell us what, what you're up to, buddy? Oh, I'm with you, actually, on the tax side of things, man. Yeah, so last years before that, it was all so small that we just kind of did it in our individual personal taxes and all that, but trying to do it right, separate it and all. But mm. other than that, just building a lot. Got some dealer orders I'm trying to get out, uh, trying to finish up a new design, so are you and hopefully you'll be able to tell us about that new design a little bit or something maybe yeah yeah we've 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 teased it and talked about what it is and it's it's no secret really just we just don't know when it's coming out yet not exactly okay you gonna tell us what that no secret is oh you want to know now i mean yeah tell everybody yeah it's a um it's actually going to be a four channel programmable true bypass looper what Um, yeah so that sounds awesome the goal with that is um, to make a looper that was not so complex, man. Like you get you get people who have programmable loopers and they're just they have all the bells and whistles. They take a lot of power. They're super large, and I just personally I didn't want all that. Um, so this is a small four channel. Um, it's only it's actually a little bit smaller pedal board real, real estate than your standard overdrive enclosure. Um, all those pedals that you've got there of mine, it's actually a little bit smaller as far as pedal board real estate goes than those. Wow. But it's a little bit taller, um, to fit the double rows of jacks in the back. Um, Mm. but yeah, so you got two banks of presets with four presets each. You can program any switch to turn on any of the loops. Wow. Um, it's going to have a, uh, the only kind of feature it has as far other than the programmable side and the live uh, activation side is it will have a um, a switchable buffer that's before any of the loops, um, so you can switch cool. that on or off if you want it. Um, but yeah, so I just got yesterday. I got what I'm hoping is the final revision on the circuit boards for those. Um, all the other revisions have worked great. It's just kind of very minor tweaks, mainly to make it easier to build and uh, kind of um, make it more solid. Wow, that sounds. That sounds like a mental headache to try to figure out how that works, but I'm glad you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, I, I love progr- the programming side of things as much as I do kind of the, the analog circuitry design. Yeah. And we're trying to get more into implementing some of that. Awesome, man. Okay. Sounds rad. Uh, yeah, do you know what you're going to call um, it? 
Yeah, yeah, we've we've got a couple of pictures up on our Instagram where we've kind of explained it. It's uh, it's going to be called the Nexus Four, um, for the four channels. Um, and we have tentative plans of expanding that to more numbers after Nexus. So mm, the Nexus Thirty Two. <laughs> Maybe not so much, but yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. That sounds super fun. Chris, what's going on? Uh, yeah, so I um, started taking guitar lessons as a 34-year-old man um, recently. I, I had my first one a week and a half ago. I, I, can I can we establish that you are a very good guitar player already? I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I think you're pretty decent too. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been playing for like... I don't know, 21 years or so. So, and used to do it professionally, but this guy I'm taking lessons from specializes in finger style. Uh -huh. And so that is something I am not super competent at. And he's been kicking my butt with like Spanish, like stuff. Oh, like Django stuff? Ish, like, like, like older than Django. Oh, gypsy jazz, man. I but do like a good gypsy jazz. It's been cool. Like he lives right in the street for me. So it's like a minute to get there. And yeah. Right. I'm going like every two weeks and it's been, it's been really cool. So he teaches finger style. Mm -hmm. uh, my teacher teaches Cobra style. Nice. Yeah. I, I started taking lessons about five or six, seven years ago. I had about five lessons and I learned a whole new, you know, little thing that I added to my little repertoire that I go through when I pick up a guitar. So mm. good for you, man. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Actually to it's get out of healthy. the box that you've been in for so long. Yeah. You need to expand. It's been, it's felt very healthy to like when I sit down with this guy to just be like a child and just be like, I'm so terrible at this mm. and it's embarrassing. And I kind of like that. Mm. So it's been nice. Yeah. I think it'd be, I, I like the idea of learning uh, styles. Different styles. That's, that's yeah. a good idea. I'd Trick. love to take jazz lessons at some point. Yeah. Too. I love. That's what I typically listen to in my free time. It's pretty difficult. Yes, it is. Jazz is yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Drew, do you, have you ever taken formal lessons? Uh, I wouldn't call them formal necessarily. Um, I I did take a couple lessons uh, for a couple years, but they were pretty weak, to be honest. Um, they weren't really foundational. Uh, mm scales chord structures anything like that they was more like bring a song in and that you like and i'll kind of teach you how to play it mm. which is fun um but i wish i would have gotten a little more theory and actual actual uh, foundational knowledge as far as that goes but i'm pretty much self-taught after that and i'm i would say i am mediocre at best so hmm. honesty there yeah i I have said many times I'm a self-proclaimed hack, not out of now, not saying that with pride. Just <laughs> I got to be real with myself. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I can't read. What, the, I can't uh, read. What, what about you? Well, what about you? Uh, well, oh, there it is. How long have we been week? doing this? I mean, <laughs> oh my God, I can't because I, I. I interrupted you before, and I'm like, hey, what about you? And you're like, why are you interrupting me? And when did I do that? It was a couple of episodes ago, uh, and I'm like, because I, I want to know what's new in your <laughs> guitar world. So I, <laughs> last week, I purchased a fuzz kit from Mammoth, an op-amp fuzz, which I was very excited about. And then right after that, I, f I found uh, on Craigslist a Big Muff Pie uh, with the tone wicker on it. Nice. And I was like, I'm going to lowball it and see, like, see what, you know. And um, I mean, not totally lowball. I wasn't like a jerk about it or anything, but I got it for a pretty impossibly to pass up, impossible to pass up price. So nice. I was like, okay, I, I realized I just bought two fuzz pedals in one. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and got it and I was really excited. And then I smashed my, the inside of my finger and it hurt really bad. So I was like, well, mm. not going to be playing this right now. <laughs> That's yeah. the worst. When you like have a bruise on your finger and then you go to fret a string and it like hits the bruise. Yeah. Oh. yeah I just, I've been there. I also hurt my finger. I drilled right through my, Jeez. well, not through my finger, but a pretty good size 
hole, and I'm hoping I don't have to get stitches or anything. But mm. there it is. Right That's there. a decent hole. That's yeah. yeah. You could put sharpen a pencil in that, bro. Yeah, I just have to, you know, put stuff in it, like yeah, like antibiotic type stuff like or Chex whatever Mix it is. Or yeah, okay. <laughs> Any racer <laughs> fill in the hole. Yeah. I don't know. Um, all right. That, well, that was a bunch of nonsense. So, anyways, here. We <laughs> hey, you disclaimer that I know. Right. But wait, what's that sound I hear? One, two, one, two, three, four on the floor. That's right. It's four on the floor. So Drew has come prepared and he's got four on the floor for us. So let's get through these. All right. So my number one uh, would probably be any sort of uh, tube screamer sort of circuit. Um, 808 to be particular. Um, I feel like the ones I've tried, I like that style better. Uh, maybe to cover a lot of ground, I'd be interested in trying something like the Earthquaker uh, Palisades, something that just like covers all your bases. Mm, um, that's a tasty really, pedal. Yeah, yeah, get a get a lot of options out of that. Um, Made here in Ohio, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See for my second. Just out of, just out of curiosity, so w- like when you when you're running a, uh, that particular kind of overdrive, you, I'm imagining you're running it pretty low. Like what 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 do you what do you really like about that? Um, at least in the ones that I like, I, I enjoy stuff that is, uh, goes with your picking dynamics really well. Um, okay. that it's uh, more gainy as you hit it harder. Mm-hmm. Um, cause typically in my setup, I'll, I'll run a tube screamer always on, uh, at least the pedals I've tried gain like halfway up maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I usually find I can just dial back on my, my picking attack get it as clean as I need it to, or I can slam it hard and it'll pretty much do anything I need it to, at least in the context I'm playing at. Um, sometimes I'll just like stack another one on top or some sort of boost on top if I need something for more of a lead line, but oh. it, it pretty much does what I need. That's awesome. Nice. All right. What do you got for number two? Uh, number two, I would probably say, um, I, I just love my timeline, Strymon timeline. Um, I had an L cap before. I probably like the sound of that one a little bit better in certain situations, but the timeline has so much functionality and flexibility and just options that you can get to on the fly that I, I don't think I could live without it at this point. Mm. Yeah. And I, I would have never bought one. I'm actually very cheap. So <laughs> I, I never would have bought one. <laughs> I never would have bought one outright. And I had the L cap. And I built a favorite switch for it, and I was scrolling through the forums, just seeing what was out there, um, some classified pages, and uh, someone was looking to downsize, and they were trading a timeline for an L cap with a favorite switch. Oh wow! And he said he said straight trade, no cash included, and I was like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, okay, I'll I'll message this guy. So I, I checked it out, and he was like, "No, just a straight trade. I don't need anything extra." And I was like. Well, shoot, if I don't like it, I'll just sell it and buy another L cap. You yeah. know, at that at that point I can't lose. So Yeah. I tried it out and I've had it for three years now probably. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you, you you so um would that lead you to get more Strymon stuff or I mean I guess you're making them so you don't <laughs> there's only so many pedals that you actually need to buy, but No, it it did and uh yeah, we'll probably get to that. That'll be my third, actually. Okay. Well, let's do it. What's number three, Drew? Uh, yeah, my, my, my third is going to be the Strymon Blue Sky. Um, Holy moly. Wow. Uh, you got a you got a mortgage on that board, bro. Yeah, you do. Didn't you I, hear Blue Sky before in a different four on the floor? No. Huh. Okay. I'm sorry. Please, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not the Big Sky. Now, the Big Sky is a whole other animal. That mm-hmm. guy's that guy's nuts. I can't I can't justify that. I I just feel like it's all gonna sound the same when it gets in the mix. Mm-hmm. I may be wrong about that, but I don't want to devote the board real estate to something like that either, or my bank account. Yeah. So the blue sky, I've just got like a light reverb setting and a super heavy reverb setting on the favorite switch. Done. That's all I need. Nice. Wow. Perfect. Now are I've you doing a, like uh, like Hillsong type lead guitar stuff? Is is that were these pedals coming to play here? Yeah, um, that sort of style for sure. Uh, cool. We don't play much Hillsong, but yeah, that's the idea. Awesome. 
Yeah, when you first said that, I was thinking Big Sky too, and so I was like, man, that's that's a lot of real estate and a lot of yeah. Like I figured cheese. that's what you were thinking, and <laughs> and a lot of people, a lot of people do run both. That's kind of the wow stereotypical board set up for kind of the praise and worship world to be honest but yeah it's it's unnecessary for me so timeline's great i I dig that one but blue sky's all i need for that Mm. well let's see what's behind door number four door number four i actually don't have i've never played but i'm getting to be a little bit of a a chorus vibrato junkie or at least i'm very i'm very intrigued by it (laughs) You need a stereo. Um, Everybody needs a stereo chorus pedal. What? He hasn't even... Did, did you get a stereo chorus pedal? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's what I thought, because oh, most man. people don't need a stereo chorus pedal. Yeah, everybody needs one. <laughs> Go ahead, Drew. But yeah, I've been, I haven't been able to try any. Um, there's no place to really try out stuff in Birmingham. It's not a huge... It's not, a huge, it's not a huge music town, much less a music gear town. Mm-hmm. So I really have not had the opportunity to try a bunch of stuff I would love to try, mm-hmm. but, um, look into something, something simple. I, I've been thinking about picking up something like the walrus, um, walrus audio, Julia, something like uh, that. Yeah. I like that. I like that yeah. pedal a lot. So I, I've been really looking to get something like that. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks for your four on the floor, man. Yeah. Nothing too flashy or crazy, but that yeah. would work great for me. But that's, that's, that's what, I, what that's this what is I about. Did. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other segment, like pedals you totally don't need but have. <laughs> or will, um, uh, I don't know. That was pretty silly of me, but <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Um, so let's see. We're talking to Drew Swindler. Uh, Swindle, sorry. And um, it's, it's hard because you, you, I, you, we know the product and it's hard not to say yep. the full thing. You probably get called Swindler a lot, right? I get, I get it a lot. Yeah. That's not actually my name, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Drew Swindle from Birmingham, Alabama. Here you are. And I'm really excited. I'm, I was extra excited when you sent us the giant box of pedals. I mean, it wasn't giant, but it was a box of pedals filled with boxes. <laughs> of, it was amazing. So we got five pedals that we get to play with, and we'll talk about them here. And um, first of all, let me, Chris, would you read off the uh, the pedals that we have in front of us, just so yes. we have some reference for those who are listening? We have the Iron Comp, the Workers, wait, no, that's wrong, the Iron Drive, the Workers Comp, the Mine Shaft, the Red Mountain, and the Magic City. Yes. And so that's pretty, that's like a, that's a whole pedal board right there. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so Drew. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, I always love to find out how you kind of, kind of got started in the thing. So we're going to, we're going to start there. How did you get started in guitar, buddy? Uh, in guitar or yeah. in building pedals? And just, just a quick brief dive into your history as a guitar player. Uh, guitar. I started playing guitar when I was fifth grade. Um, I was in middle school and the high school jazz band, uh, came and did some sort of concert, uh, for us middle schoolers trying to recruit people to be in band, but it was not the full jazz band. It was like just the rhythm section. So it was like literally a rock band. It was guitar, bass and drums. And I was like, yes, I want to do that, please. Mm -hmm. So, um, I saw that start, I picked up guitar, um, and I started playing drums and percussion in actually the middle school band at the same time. Um, so fifth grade, flash forward to seventh grade, and uh, my youth worship band was having tryouts uh, for who wanted to be involved in that music. And for whatever reason, there were like four people trying out on drums and no one trying out on electric guitar. And I was like, well, I'm equally terrible at both, but I want to play, so I'll do guitar. Nice. So that's uh, I started playing guitar there. Um, did that all through high school. Uh, went to Tuscaloosa for college and uh, did it all through college as well with some other groups. Traveled around the southeast a little bit, um, doing kids, youth camps, and college retreats, and that sort of scene, and uh different church services around the southeast and uh came back to birmingham after graduating college and 
got plugged into a church here and uh, do the same thing with a different group of people. So, oh, cool. And I'm uh, 26. I've been playing since I was about 12. Yeah, you but, got started pretty early there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you, what was your first guitar? Do you remember? Squire Strat Pack, man. <laughs> Not bad. Did you get it for Christmas or birthday? Or Oh, yeah. I got it for Christmas. Well, my birthday is actually New Year's, so oh, it's always man. kind of combined. Yeah. So I'm a little before yeah. Christmas. One of those but, kids. Yeah. Take your take your pick, but <laughs> it is a Christmas present. Nice. That's cool. Uh, and do you have, what, what are you, what's your favorite guitar right now? Well, my, my favorite guitar, my, my baby is a, uh, is a Gretsch 6118T. Mm. It's, uh, the two tone green from like the fifties Cadillac. It's kind of got a lighter green on the front and like a forest green on the sides and back. Yeah. Um, man, I so you are a thing. huge Hillsong fan. <laughs> That's does awesome. He use, what is Hillsong? Does he use one of those? Yes, he does. Uh, they're the, this. Australian, am I right there? New Zealand? Yes, they're Australian. I don't. I'm not sure what he uses. I know he uses a Gretsch. I know. Yeah. I know. Old James Duke uses the same guitar that 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 I play, and that was uh, kind of a cool realization. That's but, awesome. Uh, 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 Hillsong is like uh, it's like a worship collective that has like bands out of Australia, uh, oh, okay. but they're they're. Um, how shall we say their their standard of quality is sign, is through the roof okay. for uh, a particularly like ethereal kind of reverby guitars. Oh, okay, like, d- it's awesome. It's world class. That's in, cool. In that regard, yeah, for sure. Nice. So you have a you said well my favorite would which would lead me to believe that you got a couple others. What tell, tell well, us about a couple others you got? I've I've only got I I don't stockpile a lot of stuff because mm-hmm. like I said I'm cheap and. <laughs> I've only got three guitars, um, but my Gretsch is my favorite, and I played it for like nonstop for three years. Um, but just recently, I've started. I had a, a backup guitar that was a it's a Fender Mexican made Jazzmaster. It's their classic player series. It's nothing special, nothing crazy, but I've been playing it recently, and it's just sounding really good. So, nice. how do you like the I, neck profile on that? I, I like it. Um, it works for me. It's it's different. It's a lot different than the Gretsch. Um, I feel like maybe my my hand doesn't quite get as tired, especially playing chords. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's just me personally. But mm. like I personally love I I like most of the made in Mexico uh, necks that they they make there. I I don't know why. It's just it's just what I like. So yeah, that, that's got, why I asked you what you thought because I I really enjoy the what comes out of Mexico as far as Fender. Yeah. It's, it's got some, some little quirks about it that I might change, but it, it works really well. I might try and upgrade the bridge on it at some point, the tremolo bar system, like, like a mastery bridge or something. Yeah. Something like that. There's something about the way the, the tremolo arm screws into the bridge. It's not like a completely mm. secure connection. So if you get rocking on it too much, it's like, yeah. It's got this like metal on metal sort of noise that, yeah. that can permeate through the pickups. Right. So yeah. you got to be careful with that. But Dang. Well, cool. So, uh, oh, you said you, you, what was your third? Oh, uh, the third one, um, it's a guitar I've had for forever. It was actually my first like nice guitar that I really just can't get rid of. Um, even though I'll, I'll probably never play it in my life again, but it's a, um, <laughs> It's a Carvin CT6. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Carvin brand. Yeah, oh yeah, um, I was. I'm I'm out of California, so Carvin, okay. makes, cool. Carvin there. makes everything. Man, they make amps and yeah, they were yep. f- like a full service shop, man. Yeah, yeah. I came across them when I was. Is that one of the Diamond Head? Uh, uh, not the band, but um, the, the, like the Diamond Head stock style. Uh, no, it looks it looks a lot like a PRS, I think. Okay. Um, it's very, it's a very PRS style guitar just in general, mm-hmm. um, double cutaway. Um, what but I got that. It? It's a, it's called a dragon burst <laughs> quilt top. So it's got Holy like a, moly. it's got this like tannish color in the middle and then it, it bursts out into like a dark red. Oh, wow. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's a very pretty guitar. It's, it's, uh, 
it's a little too rock and roll for me to be honest, but, <laughs> but well. it's great. I got it when I was late in high school. Um, it was like kind of a graduation present present in a way, um, for my dad and it was all custom built. Cause that's, that's, I think that's how they still do their stuff. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into them in a long time, but I'm looking kind at, of, I'm looking at one on the internet. It kind of reminds me of a Paul Reed Smith for sure. Yeah. Along those lines. Yep. The but California the, carve top six. Well, what, yeah, what I'm looking at is beautiful though. It looks like a really nice guitar. Yeah. It I was think super Jared nice. Was was busy looking that up while you were t- telling everybody that it was a Paul Reed Smith, but, um, but we're glad that you found it, D- um, Jared. Oh crap! I'm sorry. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, pizza. That's right. Okay. <laughs> I want to know what the flavor of the week is. So, okay, uh, let's get into these pedals, man, because these were these were really great. And um, I will say, opening up the back of these things, I was like, wow, this is some nice work. This is some really nice work. Nice. Um, anybody who pays attention to, uh, I, I mean, there's like a... You could say that there's a porn category for everything in the world, you know, pizza porn. Like, it's a terrible way to say that, but I, I mean, that's that's just how you got to reference it now in order for people to understand what it is that you actually mean. So, if you for some reason haven't checked out, um, you know, uh, pedal pedal guts uh, or, or pedal porn or anything like that, um, it's uh, it's basically just when when people are showing off what's inside the pedal and there's a, there's some really impressive beautiful work out there and it's really neat to see how everybody puts their own kind of uh signature on it. i really wish that there was a different way to say that to be blunt but I, you know anyhow um so let's get let's 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 get you talking about these pedals how did you how did you get into the to the world of like pedal building? Uh, I started building pedals about 2013. Um, I was about to finish up uh, my college degree. I actually got a degree in electrical engineering um, from the University of Alabama. Um, so I, I was always interested in the electronic world and how all that worked and, and computers and programming. And I was getting into my last year of doing that. And I was, I was playing with, playing with a band and, uh, our lead guy needed a couple of simple things, some utility things. I think the first thing I ever built was like an AB switcher for him, Mm. uh, to swap like acoustic electric or something like that. And, uh, I built him a simple boost pedal for that. And, uh, I built myself a, a Strymon favorite switch for my L cap I had at the time. I was like, man, this is, this is awesome. This is a lot of fun. Um, this is the perfect way to merge like my, my education, my technical education with my passion for music. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I get to do both like at the same time. It's great. So I started doing, I started doing it in 2013, building stuff for just friends and friends of friends and just custom shop stuff of anything anyone asked for. I was just taking any sort of request as long as it was somewhat feasible for me at the time and uh doing like water slide decals of whatever graphic someone wanted and the whole nine yards and i did that for about two years i'd say until about fall of 2015 um i really wanted to do something that was kind of more me i guess you could say something that was more more personal and something that really had my my touch on it um, I had felt like I'd learned enough to kind of do my own thing. And so we released our, our first three pedals in the fall of 2015, I think. And that so was, you, the, went, uh, you went out with like three right out of the gate. Yeah, man. We, um, what I, and there's a reason for that. I didn't, the, the first pedal that I ever built for this line was the iron drive, which is a tube screamer based overdrive. And I was like, that's not going to work to be honest. Like I didn't want to start a new company and brand a new company and our first pedal be a tube screamer overdrive i was like (laughs) that's not gonna work no one's gonna give a flip about that for the record that is one of the best sounding drives i've played well thanks i appreciate that. legit i i I put that up against uh, 
three three other drives at my house, and I was like, oh, dang it. This yeah, is it good. definitely has its own flavor. Definitely. It's a, it's yeah. a good drive. I liked it as well. Yeah. It sounded really I good really, my orange jams. I really love it. That's I use two of them on my personal board, and that's pretty much all I use. I stack them if I need something bigger. But, um, yeah, so I, I didn't want – to just start a new company and that's all we had. I was like, no one's gonna care. So we we spent a little bit longer time and developed the the mine shaft reverb and the magic city delay and we just pounded them out, released them all at the same time. Wow. We're like, hey, we're rebranding. Swindler FX is kind of going to its own signature stuff. We still did a little custom shop here and there, but mm-hmm. it's like this is a new era for us. Here's what we got. Three pedals, covers a lot of ground. Um overdrive reverb and delay big mm-hmm. staples so yeah that's how we did it let me ask you who else is involved because you keep saying we so I'm, uh, I'm like who is this other person yeah it's just me and a buddy of mine his name's sam sam light uh he just graduated from alabama also an electrical engineering degree and uh i actually met him he, through my wife our wives were best best friends and okay, got hooked cool. up with him and uh, he does – I I'm originally brought him on mainly to do graphics. He does pretty much anything that you see, okay. the website, social media, pedal graphics, instructional inserts, stickers, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's his work. But, um, but he did uh, – he does have that engineering background. So he, he populates the circuit boards and, and does that side of things and bounces ideas. And he's a big gear nerd. Um, he plays at his church down there as well. We're we're very much alike. That's um, pretty cool, man. No man's his own island, so it's always good to have your your helpers and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. That's for sure, cool. yeah. I love the uh, I'm I love compressor pedals. I love that you're calling the compressor pedal the workers' comp. That's hilarious. <laughs> Kudos there. Uh, yeah. walk, walk us through some of the names of these pedals. You know, what's the idea behind the name? You know, obviously, mine shaft for the reverb. That's pretty rad. I can imagine that would sound pretty cool to play a guitar amp into a mine shaft in real <laughs> yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. So all the all the names, the idea behind those were kind of for them to be Birmingham inspired, mm-hmm. where we're where I'm based out of, kind of that Birmingham industrial, uh, blue collar sort of yeah. feel to them. Um, that's where you get the workers comp and. Um, the only one that doesn't really fit in that right now is, I guess, the the Magic City, but it is totally Birmingham based. Um, Birmingham was was known as the Magic City um, for how quickly it grew um, with its steel this and is the iron industry. Podcast, this is great. Yeah, yeah. So, and well, and the same for the Red Mountain. Actually, um, the Red Mountain is a is kind of a landmark. It's a park here in Birmingham, um, but it also fits well for tremolo with the peaks and valleys of waveforms and stuff like that. So. Mm. That's yeah. where it all. That's where it all comes from. When I was in uh, basic training in Fort McClellan, Alabama, which is Birmingham, I noticed the uh, soil there was red, and mm-hmm. I also noticed the ants were red that were biting on my hands while I was in the grass. Those doing ants push-ups. are memes. <laughs> yep, some fire ants. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, I remember that quite well. Yeah, I remember my dad used to live in Atlanta. And I'll never forget seeing red dirt for the first yeah. time and just being so confused. Yeah. It's cool though. My folks live in 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 uh, Georgia, Lake Oconee. Cool. Anyways, oh wow. Okay, so we all we all like red dirt. Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the workers comp. Let's so let's uh, let's kind of get into each one of these little pedals here. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe maybe from a point of not necessarily timeline but how you might uh see them on the board um i typically run my compressor first Mm -hmm. um i like to have a nice stable sustaining signal feeding into my drives um but i actually don't use high levels of compression so it could be totally different for someone else i actually don't like it to sound squished i don't like it to ruin my dynamics of right. my picking um so yeah. i actually just use it very lightly enough to add sustain on longer held notes yeah. um but the, the workers comp can get squishy for sure i mean it can get real chicken picking squishy on it 
um, without adding as much noise as a lot of compressors, which uh, I really am a noise stickler uh, as much as I can be. But So on the workers' comp, uh, what, uh, what was your... Did you add anything to it uh, that might be sort of like, hey, I, I've seen 100 comps before, like, you know, 100, 100 compressors. What did you do different? Did you do anything different? Yeah, um, something I did do that I just wanted personally was the, the and it's, it's not a new idea. It's been done a couple of times, but the, the bright switch on it, mm-hmm. I actually really enjoy personally. Um, a lot of times when you start adding a little you know, medium to high compression, you start, it starts squishing and it sounds kind of muddy No, we're not muddy, but you lose that high sparkle. Um, and it's not a new concept, but just putting a bright switch on there to, um, to bring those highs back in, even when you are at those larger compressed settings, uh, really just brings the, the, the highs to your guitar back. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I think it's also worth saying that, um, when you, use these pedals when you play with them you obviously have like really really high quality components on them all aluminum knobs um and uh also the, with the soft uh, you know the soft touch uh foot switch uh which mm-hmm. we're just seeing so much more of now which is really great i think yeah i like the tightness yeah. when you you feel when you turn the knobs you know that's something i really like on pedals yeah and the, the soft touch switching is something most of these pedals came out of kind of my personal needs. That's mm-hmm. where a lot of them started. And uh, like I've said before, me me playing in church primarily, uh, where I play is is pretty small, or at least it's not small, but it's very close and kind of intimate. And those big chunky mechanical switches yep. just don't work for situations like that. Yeah. I mean, you can hear Kick them. Flank. <laughs> you can hear them 10, 15 rows back, and it's just like. It's not going to work. So I knew right off the bat anything we made was going to have soft touch switching on it. So we started with that, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, So, yeah, the iron drive really quick. Um, Anything uh, extra special that you want to throw in? I think you you do have a switch on there. Um, Can you hand me that? Yeah. I I do really love this pedal. It's quite nice. Yeah, Yeah. so. You got a three-way switch on it. Yep, it's got a three-way diode clipping switch, and um, a separate bass and treble control is really all it is. And we did some different tweaks on some of the values, but I mean overall, it's a it's a TS808 sort of clone, mm-hmm. um, but just with a couple of those features with the soft touch switching. And for whatever reason, I just I feel like I don't I don't really know why, but with the, the components that we tweaked when I was breadboarding it, it just seems to have more of a an open characteristic to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but a little more I hate the word transparent, but it, it's not as colored um, like your different guitars still sound like themselves through it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny you say that because I think that one of the things that I have a trouble I have trouble with the tube screamers are that I feel like it colors my sound. It, it, it feels like it goes, uh, it just like a, a little, a layer of color just goes over it. And yeah. that's what I appreciated on this one. Cause, um, I actually have a, a tube screamer mini pedal, which, mm-hmm. um, sound, I mean, if you close your eyes and you clicked on a, bu- a bunch of different ones, you, you really, I mean, you just can't tell the difference. Actually, uh, that pedal show just, uh, they've got, a they've got a video where they go through the different kinds of tube screamers uh and they were climbing all over this mini that said it just has a tone control and tone controls are cool but they're also they you know that they, they can be rather limiting in what you're mm-hmm. actually getting out of it so having an individual um Bass and treble on that was was pretty nice, and the clipping switch was kind of unique too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Cool. So yeah. then, what do we, what do we what do we got next in the boxes over here, fellas? Red Mountain. Oh boy, yeah, that one is our newest, and that one has kept us so busy. Um, it's by far our biggest undertaking. Um, yeah. So it's it's a 
fully analog signal path, digitally controlled tremolo. Um, there are six jacks in this, just so everybody understands. <laughs> and it and it's in your 125B enclosure. Yeah, six, they're all, six they're all jacks, are. five knobs, a three-way switch, uh, a Two momentary foot switch, and a, and a standard on-off foot switch, and three LEDs. Yeah, when I pulled yep. that open, I was like, "That's like a Winnebago." When I yeah. saw it, I tremoloed. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> no, the the goal behind that was I wanted to make a tremolo pedal that was fairly affordable and did everything that I would ever want a tremolo pedal to do. Yeah. But not take up a lot of real estate cuz in the end it's still quote unquote just a tremolo pedal. I mean, for the most part it's not the staple of most people's sound. Yeah. Um so I didn't want to take up half my board space with a wide double sides enclosure for a stereo trim, you know. So make it small, give it tap tempo, give it as many features as I would want. Yep. And that's where we landed and so it, I, uh, I think it's worth I just want to jump in on the on the you know you've got your standard sort of trim knobs but then you've got it, talk talk about the two um, less standard trim no, uh, knobs that you have here. Um, uh, like the subdivision and waveforms. Right. Yeah. So there's six subdivisions. I'm trying to picture it in my head. Six subdivisions and five waveforms. Um, so because it's a tap tempo tremolo, you can tap into the tempo of your song, and depending on how you want it to modulate. You can set the the division to like sixteenth notes or eighth notes, dotted eighth, triplets, quarter notes. Um, but then you've got waveforms you can select between sine, triangle, square wave, ramp up, which is like a sawtooth up, ramp down, which is kind of a reverse sawtooth, and then there's a stutter mode, which is a little unique as well. Mm, I um, did which, like that stutter. Yeah, it it actually turns the tap tempo switch into like a momentary kill switch for like Morse code type stuttering through. Um, if you wanted to just like hit a giant chord with like oscillating reverb yes. and delay before it, and then just like tap to your heart's content at some random rhythm. It's a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Um, that's so that's that. the way I like using, I, I, two ways that I like using a trim. One is for kind of, you know, uh, I, I mean a, a very obvious trim, you know, I, I do mostly rhythm. So like it, it's you're gonna know a trim's on if I'm playing the, the rhythm with it. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I I love the idea of of punching in a, a you know a momentary trim. Yeah, for sure. There's a couple of other little special features in that pedal. There's a there's an onboard preset that you can save one preset on there. Uh, there's an expression jack that you can control the speed or depth knob with an external expression. Or you can change the mode on it and you can activate your preset externally with like a Strymon favorite switch or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's an external tap switch um, or tap jack. And uh, we also did kind of a simulation of a like a Leslie type speaker. Mm -hmm. um, so if you hold the tap switch, it'll ramp the tempo up mm -hmm. until you let it go. And if you hold it again, it'll slow the tempo down until you let it go as well. This cool. is um, a highly, highly functional pedal in a standard pedal enclosure for a standard pedal price, people. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's well a, done. It, it took a lot of time. I can only, I imagine, learned, I can only imagine what it takes to like, you, you know, I, I love the idea of like, yes, we did it. Oh my gosh, we have to build 200 of these. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the next oh, step. No. Is I got to demo we, that a little longer. We released we released that in like November, and I think like two weeks ago we just got caught up on all of our oh, wow. like orders that kind of just kept coming in. I mean they weren't wow. they didn't all come in in November and December, but I think we finally kind of cleared out all the queue on that one. Man, well it's pretty stellar. Let's move on to the uh, Magic City. Yeah, so Magic City was one of the original three that we released. Um, nothing crazy special on that one, but what I did want to do with that is have a tap tempo delay in that sized enclosure. Um, the same size enclosure as all the other ones. 
Um, Because at that time, I think there was only one other one on the market at all that was tap tempo and it was that size. And uh, so that's what we set out to do. And uh, we got it working in there. It's a, it's, it's a, it's your standard PT 2399 delayed chip that everyone and their brother uses. Um, but we, I got a, I got a bowl full of them in my counter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just eat them for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. They're all over the place, but so it's a, it's a digital delay. That's kind of analog voiced is what everyone dubs it as. And mm-hmm. we actually, I, 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 I tuned I tuned the filtering in it in a way where you can actually coax a thousand milliseconds of delay out of it, um, mm. but you have to filter it and it gets really dark. I mean, it's a, it's a dark delay. Mm-hmm. Um, you can you can you can turn the filter knob up and it can get brighter, um, but if you're running those longer delays at times and you have the filter up, you're getting some noise artifacts from that delay chip because it's just not meant to go in those those ranges so it's there if you want it some people like that noise and they use it in different ways that crackling and sputtering motor boating sort of sort of noise but some people like it but if you want to get a long delay time you can filter it back and get it real dark and it'll 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 get rid of all that but it is a dark dark delay but tap tempo three subdivisions uh quarter note dotted eighth and eighth note and uh yeah so when you're looking at this pedal um uh and you don't have the handy instructions that came in a box uh which was actually pretty nice you kind of have them like cards like easy to read like here's how to use this thing uh this one's got three jacks on it you want to tell us about that yeah so you've got an input jack output jack and a external tap tempo because um yeah, a lot of people who have multiple time delay pedals have like one single tap controller mm-hmm. they want to control and sync all their delays with. So mm-hmm. you're seeing that more and more nowadays where things really need to have external jacks um, to control the tap tempo so they can sync up to these mm-hmm. controllers or whatever. So Cool. Nice, nice, nice. And then uh, I think finally, do we finally? Yes. I think this might have been my favorite. I played this. This is the one that I really ended up spending a lot of time with, uh, which was the Mine Shaft. Cool, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, the Mine Shaft is is our reverb pedal. Um, it's built off of the tried and true built and reverb brick. Um, again, there's there's a lot of things that are out there with that, but to put a spin on it, we wanted to have a preset. So what we did is we've got those dual stacked knobs they're like concentric knobs and so you've got a, a preset that that uses the bottom set of knobs and you you hit one of those the soft touch foot switches and it goes to your top set of knobs it's um, so smart really like that i had a so lot of fun you got, with this one yeah yeah so you've got um a different preset that, that swaps between two different reverb and tone controls um and then you've got a universal feedback knob that kind of changes how long the reverb dwells kind of how long it lingers around um and then we've got a little bit of a kind of hidden feature where if you hold down the bypass switch it'll kind of instantly short out the feedback knob and throw it into oscillation um depending on where the level of your reverb is if your reverb is really low it'll take forever to get it there because it's not recirculating a a large reverb signal but if your reverb is kind of higher and you hold that foot foot switch down it'll it'll boost into oscillation and just it's really cool to just hold it out and let it make a crazy delay sort of oscillating noise that's rad um i also noticed that you you know a lot of I think a lot of pedal builders tend to say, all right, we're going to figure out a way to do it, and this is going to be the, the, the way that we do all of our pedals, whether that is in graphics or uh, knob style or configuration. Like like if you, if you get a particular builder's knob or pedal, it's like, okay, well, those are the same knobs you're going to get on every single pedal, um, you know, like electro harmonics. Oh, those knobs are the worst. But anyways, whatever. Um, so one thing I noticed was that like 
you didn't really hold to that. You've got top jacks and side jacks, and you've got um, power on the side. You got power, I think, on the bottom on one, and po- power on the top. Um, which I think, at, at first glance, when I have all these pedals, it, the, the first thing I thought was like, "Well, geez, you didn't put very much thought into that, now, did you?" Now <laughs> I, I realize that it was a very short-sighted thing to think because you obviously put a ton of thinking into these. And you didn't hold yourself to some rule for no reason. Mm-hmm. So that was what, what worked best for the pedals. I yeah, imagine. for sure. Yeah. I, I enjoy uniformity. Um, personally, I do. Um, I like things to kind of be similar. But especially in the first couple of pedals we did, the way the circuit boards, sometimes they just kind of lay themselves out and they just work best in a certain configuration. And on a lot of those, the way the circuit board itself got laid out and the components we were using, it just lent itself to certain jack configurations um, that fit around that better. Um, So, yeah. Awesome. Um, And then you have the new one coming out. And when when do you think that'll be out? Uh, I would like to open pre-orders for that middle of April. I would like to start shipping some stuff out end of April, probably. Um, I'm trying to get it into the hands of a couple of people to test um, just to make sure there aren't any code bugs or anything like that that, you know, rear their heads when people start messing with it in ways that I don't never think about. But it's a uh, it's all working. It's all functional and it's it's ready to go. I just got to get some ready. Awesome. That was a ton of pedals to go through and I'm, I'm happy that you indulged us to go, you know, and go through all the details of each one of them. I encourage people who are not familiar with these, take a quick look on Instagram or on his website and, uh, get familiar with these. They're, they're pretty, they're pretty sweet. Yeah. I saw on one of your cards, you talked about, um, let's see here, which one was that? I think it, oh yeah, it was the red mountain where you were talking about, um, we will accomplish our goal. Tell us more about that. What is your goal with these pedals? Man, our goal is just to make the best stuff we can. Um, Make it as quality as we can, as small as we can, as functional as we can, best sounding. Um, But we're just, we're not really, right now we're not constrained by market pressure or stuff like that we're just two dudes with electrical engineering degrees and a couple of soldering irons in a basement and we just make stuff that we like and we make it as good as we can so that's uh that's our goal and cool hopefully people jump on board and like it but that's uh we're just gonna make the best stuff we can you know in saying that where are you heading with your pedals anything new and anything different uh, coming up aside around from the, the one that you're that you're already working on right is there yeah is there like a long term kind of uh there's a long term goal or, or or is there something even bigger in the future uh a little bit there's kind of a direction i guess and uh, that direction would be i'm not the most creative person in the world and i'll be i'll fully it meant that. Um, so as far as like coming up with new and unique and cool sounds and pedals that have done stuff you've never even thought of, that's not really me to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I like to do is take like tried and true stuff that sounds good, tweak it, maybe make it a little bit better, but I like the functionality side of things, making it as useful as it possibly could be. Um, get the most functionality out of something that you enjoy. Um, so I think y'all talked about him before on, on your show, but like Chase Bliss, his mm-hmm. stuff, he's he's like my pedal idol if I had one. Um, huh. Guy's nuts. His The way he can interface and control every single parameter of an analog circuit, keeping it analog, mind you, is amazing. So what I, I would like... I think he's that person for an awful lot of builders. Uh, I, I believe it. He yeah. deserves to be it. Um but I would like Swindler to get to a point where it's like offering that uh, uh, dumbed down to a sense. Um, if you want all that stuff and you want every control parameter, go with his stuff by all means. Um, but I want it to be 
a lot of digital control and the ability to have presets and have the most usability out of a out of a pedal as you can but maybe at maybe at a lower price point maybe a little bit uh, more approachable um Mm -hmm. something that people can understand right off the bat a little bit quicker and easier to pick up um but not sacrificing anything um I could see. I feel like there's a niche there, sort of to pitch digital control, analog signal path. Yeah, the, and that's the the Red Mountain is really where we we got into that the most for sure. Yeah, the bells um, and whistles are are unbelievable on these things, man. Yeah, yeah. Compared to a lot of a lot of other pedals I've tried. Yeah, there's Thanks. there's not a lot out there that's that you know speaking of the, of the Red Mountain, at least that I'm aware of, that's a digital control with an analog signal path. It's usually either all analog or all digital when not a whole lot of combination of the two. And I, I know at least from, you know, my industry in recording, you know, only, you know, in the last decade or so have you seen uh, you know, some compressor manufacturers have started to do that, you know, to manufacture compressors for studio recording that are digitally controlled, but it's an all analog signal path. Yeah, for sure. And and there are reasons for that. Um, it's not a problem for like some of the bigger companies. They got engineers on deck like crazy, but especially for the, the, the booming boutique pedal world, it's harder to do. I mean, uh, the, the digital coding is, is a lot harder to pick up on the internet and read about, you know, you Mm. can read forum after forum and find schematics on simple analog circuits like crazy. You, You can build an overdrive like you can Legos, you know, it's no problem, but to actually get in there and code something. Yeah, the design of that, that's where you were, you know, when we spoke previously to this, uh, that's you really lit up when you were talking about how much you enjoyed the design aspect of not, you know, please don't, uh, listeners, don't confuse design with like how this pedal looks. We're talking about actual sound design um, and, uh, electronic, you know, signal paths and stuff. So uh, that, that's where you were like really geeking out on. Yeah. I, I love, I love the programming side. Um, so really tweaking things to do, do as much stuff as I can with them by doing some sort of microcontroller coding. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, cool. Uh, I, like I said, I really appreciate you going through all the fine details with that. Um, we're going to jump into our wrap up, uh, segment called Chris, that's your cue. Would you rather, 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 rather. rather, rather. I have an effect. I, I can put that on, but that one works out great. <laughs> Let's just do that effect. Okay. Chris, Would you rather, this is a guitar-related game, one single question, we'll go around the circle and answer. Would you rather be the best live guitarist in history, but absolutely the worst studio guitarist ever, or the best studio guitarist in history, but one of the worst live guitarists ever? So no matter what, you're terribly embarrassed when put in the wrong situation. Yeah. Are you always put in both situations? Yes, it's your time is split 50 50 <laughs> between these two things okay we'll go to jared first and give drew a break because he's been talking a long time jared go i would rather tick tock tick tock tick tock be the best <laughs> studio. <laughs> i'd rather be the best studio musician ever man okay yeah i get that wait a minute why did i just say that i, I wanted know. the opposite i want to be no, the you best. already chose it's too it's late, too late. <laughs> oh man no go ahead no, I, I don't know why I said that. I wanted the I I would rather be the best performer okay. ever and be the worst studio. I mean, look at uh, look back on um, the Wrecking Crew. Nobody knew who the heck those guys were for years. Yeah. So yeah, I'd rather have the recognition of being a a fantastic live musician. Okay. Guitar player. All right, Chris. I would have to go with studio because the studio and the studio you can. Uh, you can outlive your exp- expiration date. You can continue to create music. Well played. Post death, yeah. and while you're sleeping, um, that's just cool. Uh, yep. And I you can, can always you can always fake it live. Okay, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, Drew. Yeah, I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards the studio side as well. Um, I'm trying to think of a good reason for that, really, but 
I feel like the creativity is a little bit open there. Um, you're not stuck to play in the same thing the same way on a live stage for an audience who's expecting the same thing. Um, interesting angle. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like being a studio guitarist, you're really more of a, you bring the creative ideas to light. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd like to explore that more. As for me, I, let's see. It's so tough. No, it isn't. Not at all. Best live musician. (laughs) Hey, Duh. there we go. I I do play live, and the idea of being the worst live is just <laughs> terrifying. Like, that is a, it is an incredibly hard thing to do at times. Not always, um, but it's, it's. I mean, you're up there. That it, The stage doesn't lie. You, you are absolutely, completely vulnerable, and, and at the same time, all powerful. And it's, that's a, that's a crazy rush. Yeah. So I uh, definitely hundred percent best life performer. It's a good way to put it. All powerful, but completely vulnerable. It's, yes. it's a tough question, man, because oh, yeah. there's not it's a, hard. there's not a better feeling in the world to be on stage with your guitar strapped on. I mean, that is a, a fantastic. I can feeling. think of a few, but, but the, well, <laughs> come on, man, this is guitar knobs, not something else. <laughs> but, uh, the studio thing too. I, what a fantastic, would you rather, man? I yeah. Want, well, I thought you were going to say not a better feeling than, than stand on stage with, with a pizza in your hand. Uh, okay. oh, see, well, let's gotcha not there. talk about pizza. Uh, see, I would, I would go off that and back up my studio position here. I think there's not a better feeling than to get done in the studio and say, I made something and yeah. that is sticking around. I, 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 I agree with that. I, the, the, yeah. Doing things in the studio are so satisfying and it's so much fun. But it is very forgiving, unlike the stage. Yeah. Well, but the stage, the moment comes and goes. Yes. In the studio, that moment is there for maybe eternity. Yeah. yeah. I still get goosebumps when I listen to stuff that I recorded ages ago. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could, it's timeless. I also, and I also get cringe moments when I see stuff that I've played live before. (laughs) Anyways. All right, guys. Thank you so much, uh, Drew, for hanging out with us. Um, Glad you got to be a knob for a little while. And uh, I mean, once a knob, always a knob. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, our door is always open anytime you want to hit us up. As soon as you got something new to drop on us, please let us know. Yeah. And Will do. tell everybody where they can find you, get in touch with you, contact you, buy your stuff, etc. Yeah, well, we've got uh, swindlereffects.com is our website. Uh, we've got a contact page on there. Um, like I said, it's just me and a buddy of mine who run it. So you're going to get one of us that respond. We usually respond as quick as we can. Uh, we've got a couple of dealers around the U.S. Uh, Instagram is where we update the most. Um, as far as the newest stuff that we're doing, uh, we push that to Facebook and Twitter sometimes, not as much, but Instagram's the place website. You can check us out. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody who's been listening, uh, all around the world and subscribe. Yeah. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit us at our website at theguitarknobs.com. For episodes, news, and guest profiles, you can get all social with us on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs. Give us a tweet at guitar underscore knobs. And check out our gallery on Instagram at guitar knobs. <laughs>